on on uh, the good old Twitter. Moms for Opie's is Twitter name, whatever. But he, oh. but you got to see what he sent me yesterday, Anthony. It's on my Twitter. A few <laughs> uh, a few uh, posts down if you want to check out the video for yourself. But here it is. It's a uh, knife throwing mother from the 1960s. Oh my God! You no got, fucking now, way. Now describe what you're seeing before we play the video. Uh, this is a black and white photograph. Uh, looks very it's old. It's got to be the early 60s, right? Yeah. There is a girl of two or three. Um, maybe slight. Ah, uh, whatever. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, no, whatever. I, would, I, would, I would put her at four or five. Uh, really? If it if it matters. Yeah, because no I'll tell you why. Oh, because you could talk? I'll tell you why. Because her younger sister is going to do exactly the same oh, thing. Okay. And the sister uh, looks about two. Okay. All right? So she's standing against a um, a wooden, uh, like, planks, some wooden planks. Right. And uh, she's in a, uh, a lovely little one-piece <laughs> bathing suit. <laughs> right. And kind of looking like Shirley Temple. A yeah, little a little bit. Shirley Temple-ish. A little bit. And in the foreground of this uh, shot is a fat-ass 60s mom. In her frumpy fucking house dress. Very frumpy, hurling knives at this young girl and just missing her around her head and uh, all around her uh, her very right. okay. diminutive body. With that, play the video. <laughs> family, the Gallaghers, Connie Ann, five years old, and Colleen Sue, two and a half, are a big help to Mother Luella, who is no mean hand with a handful of knives. Connie Ann is a veteran at being a target for her mother's cutlery and doesn't turn a hair at Ma's cut-ups, even though Ma's pretty sharp with the cleavers. <laughs> But Holy Connie's ready for shit. a stand-in, and evidently Kalina Sue has more trust in Mother's aim than the audience has. It takes a steady eye and Those a stout heart it. to heave knives at the apple of your eye. But this female William Tell has no qualms and plenty of faith. Oh. <laughs> this ought to keep them from dating Negroes. <laughs> a near miss, but this mess says it's as good as a smile. The music is the greatest. Yeah. She's Push throwing knives around a child. Well, I just tried, but gosh, I'm too bashful. <laughs> oh, no! She's throwing meat cleavers. She's throwing <laughs> knives at her... A baby. At her at children. Baby. At her children. Yeah, a two and a half year old. Like and a... they're doing a little news piece on it like it's adorable and great. Right. And meanwhile, today... Kids completely taken away. Oh, my God, yeah. yeah. She's pretty handy with a knife. And they have a close-up of the girl as the knives are... A couple of them were a mere inch or two from oh, her yeah, head. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't Very even like the, the mom was kind of doing, you know, misses. No. She was she was she trying wa- to get as close she, as she can to the, her own child's head she to make an impression. She walked a few in there. She walked a few oh, down. Oh, yeah, and she did. Real close to the kid's head. <laughs> oh, yeah, she did. Ah, yes. That was just normal behavior back in the 50s and 60s. People just loved the uh, spectacle. Amazing, right? And it was just neighbors watching in horror <laughs> right. as she threw <laughs> knives at her children. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> Neighbors I, just going, is anyone going to do anything yeah, about someone this? Is tackle this woman <laughs> right. and arrest her? Then they show a close-up of the mom, and she's got, like, psycho eyes. She looked crazy. She looked nuts, right? But I love the announcer. Oh, that one almost, that no, meat cleaver oh. almost struck the baby. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and after that video plays... A close call. Yes. The it, baby almost died again. <laughs> after that video plays, it's it's posted on my Twitter, OP Radio. Uh, go to the cosmetic one, I think. The next one in, Danny? Uh, I think it's that one. Ah. L- listen to this. Great. I love it. Yeah, I think this was the one. Listen to this, Danny. Dizzy you, in and out of doors every day. Think how much dust and dirt settle on your skin. Mm. And makeup clings to your skin, too, and clogs pores. That's why your face needs a thorough cleansing each day. And that's why cleansing tests were made by an independent testing laboratory. This same kind of dirt was made just radioactive enough to register on a Geiger counter. Leading cleansing creams... radioactive (laughs) dirt on her face. They put radioactive (laughs) dirt on her face and tested it with a Geiger counter. (laughs) Holy shit, I love the 50s. (laughs) That is 
was staring at her. If the dirt was made just radioactive enough to get her face glowing in the dark for eight and years. And holding a Geiger counter right up to her face. There's a Geiger counter on her face because they wanted to see where the dirt was. <laughs> Holy mother of God. And I guess that's how they're selling this product? Is yes. that what it comes down to? Uh, well, they're selling the product because now the, the the radioactivity represents the dirt. Right. So then they'll hold the Geiger counter to her face, and I'm oh, sure it'll okay. stop clicking. All right, good. Let's continue. We're used to remove this dirt. The Geiger counter proved that Dorothy Gray Salon Cold Cream cleanses up to two and a half times more thoroughly than any soap or other cleansing cream tested. It's for white people. When you cleanse with Dorothy Gray Salon Cold Cream, you know you remove dirt. And more important, you remove every trace of makeup which can clog your pores. That's why Salon Cold Cream is especially recommended for a young complexion. Yes. A clean skin is a healthy skin. And your skin will look smoother and clearer when you use Dorothy Gray Salon Cold Cream. It's so quick and easy, too. Takes mm -hmm. no more time than improper cleansing. For particulars of this Geiger counter story... Atomic test write booklet. Write this test booklet. It to says to atomic Dorothy test Gray booklet. Box 18. Holy shit. What's Grand in Central Box 18, Station, Grand Central New Station, York New York City? City? That woman's head is in there right now. The <laughs> whole fucking rotted away from radioactivity. <laughs> Can we go back to the knife-throwing lady? Because uh, we missed something. Kevin from Connecticut writes... Uh, Mrs. Gallagher had three daughters. Ah, what happened to the third one? <laughs> did the third one did Oops. Take it seems one. Mrs. Gallagher uh, missed. <laughs> did she take out one of her daughters right with the meat the cleaver? Forehead. Oh, my God. I, I cannot get enough of how things have really I, changed. I love the commercials from the 50s. And Radioactive the 60s. enough. The Geiger counter. It picks up on a giant Geiger counter put to her face. <laughs> How can we prove that this stuff works? All right, let's cover her face <laughs> in radioactive dirt. <laughs> they just loved atomic anything in the 50s. Like, it was good. I was talking uh, uh, years ago about that shoe thing they had uh, oh, in, in shoe stores. Tom's got it on the line, too. Yeah. Uh, explain first, Anne. I'm sorry. In shoe stores, they would have these uh, x-ray machines. And uh, people would stand on them, and the shoe salesman, no doctor really or anything, would look at your bone structure of your feet through, through this x-ray and give you a better fitting shoe. Meanwhile, this thing was throwing off so much radioactivity, and it was completely unprotected, and people would just do it for the fun of it, and uh, it was... So goddamn dangerous, these fucking things. Well, more for the salesmen, right? Because they were there all day. For salesmen, customers, yeah, everybody. And they would get well, leukemia from these fucking well, things. And you oh, got, yeah. You got to think your local shoe store, too. You know, the mom would come in with the kids, and, and it would be a fun, That's quick a little novelty. thing to do. Look, they, I could see my feet. And then I could see uh, my bones right. right through my feet. And then you're running out as a little kid going... Telling all your friends you got to try yeah. this. This is kind of cool. Mommy, I'm sleepy today and my hair's falling out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Tom in Jersey. Tom, you know what you know, Anthony's guys, talking about, right? Yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about. But I think it was pushed like they did that back in like the 1930s and 40s before any of this uh, radioactive and it was more like a uranium sort of thing. They yeah. had like about 30,000 across the United States oh. um, in shoe stores and orthopedic um uh, doctor's offices, this thing was supposed to be the modern marvel of the world, not realizing that you're going to get a big old cancer foot from it. Sure. A big old cancer foot. Unbelievable. By the way, the worst shoes ever are being oh, shown in the video. Them. Aren't they wonderful? Like Ichabod Crane shoes. <laughs> Ichabod Crane. <laughs> They're x-raying the feet inside those horrible shoes. Yeah. To show you how bad ah, the shoes are. Grossly deformed feet. And look at the feet of the Negro. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Step up to the x-ray machine, Tuskegee Airmen. <laughs> 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 yes, we love testing radioactivity out on Negroes. See what happens to them first. <laughs> they glow as they take a drink from their own fountain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, wonderful. Oh the fluoroscope. Yes, step into the fluoroscope. Get yourself some leukemia. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say hi. Smoke a lucky. Oh, what do we got? 
Okay. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Let me uh, let me go to Tony in Jersey. Tony, how much cancer can you get in you? X-ray hey, machines, uh, lucky strikes, radioactive makeup. <laughs> Jesus. Look at how big the X-ray machine, too. Oh, a big yeah, wooden box. Giant. You had to step up into and then look. You look in binoculars the and get eye cancer from <laughs> right. it. Just <laughs> every part of your body is just getting irradiated. That couldn't be good for oh, you. Oh, it's just twisting your DNA into pretzels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Do you know how? Yeah. I bet you some kid spent hours. Oh, hours looking at his foot bones. Yeah. yeah Can I get my face under here? Go ahead, Johnny. Give it a whirl. Hmm. Oh, you know somebody put their hands under. X-raying and, uh, in his brain. Yeah, stick your head in there, little Johnny. X-ray. Fi Everything looked so cheap and cartoonish in the yes, 50s. Yes, it did. Who, what adult would go buy shoes X-ray fitted? Well, it was the modern way to buy shoes. What do you want, mom, to just touch and see if your toe comes to the tip of the shoe? Or do you want to see your bone structure right through your feet in the modern way? Of course, you'll have tumors growing off of your legs within a week. <laughs> yeah, why is there cauliflower on my foot bones? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Just flip the on switch, push and hold. 20 to 70 rems per minute. Is that bad? That's oh, no. not good. As opposed to good. good. I don't know what a rem is. Let's... That's uh, five rems per year come off of a nuclear power plant. Really? Yeah. And how many <laughs> how many rems for the foot machine? That was like 20, what, oh 25 God. rems. Per minute. To 75 per, a minute. Per minute. Oh and five God. rems per year come oh off God. of the containment unit of a nuclear oh power plant. So. Do you know how many foot people, <laughs> oh how many foot locker employees are fucking dead of leukemia in the 50s? <laughs> Holy shit. It really is insanity. Let's go to Tony in New Jersey. He's got another one. Tony. Wow. Hey, guys. Hey. Yeah, I saw something like on an old newsreel, you know, the people like dressed up in the 40s, the guys with their jaunty little fedoras and shit. Yes. And they're, and they're walking down a ladder into a pool filled with like dry cleaning fluid. And they're walking out the other side to prove that the dry cleaning fluid is safe. And the guy's like, and look how clean their clothes are. <laughs> I, I remember that one. You yeah. do? Yeah. <laughs> oh and meanwhile, God. dry cleaning fluid is so fucking toxic. <laughs> is it? Bad? Oh, they just love that shit. <laughs> And another one I saw, too, it had a bunch of people standing there, like, all waving and stuff, like, all stupid. And they're spraying DDT on them to show, oh, this is the new insecticide. Yeah. DDT, it's wonderful. <laughs> it's good for your health. In, uh, Jeez. on uh, that, that uh, documentary, Atomic Cafe, Thanks, they, they have uh, the nuclear blasts uh -huh. and the soldiers running right into it. And beforehand, like, there's this just bad acting of this soldier going, uh, and he's with the uh, the chaplain. It's like, well, father, what what are we gonna see when the atomic blast goes off? And the father goes, well, son, uh, what you'll see is a large mushroom cloud, and the fires will rise up to the heavens. Oh, jeez! Giving you a wonderful look at the power that we're just really talking it up. And then they're they're wearing these radioactive badges. And the, the atomic blast goes off, and they jump out of their trenches and just rush toward the mushroom cloud. Why? And certain death. Because <laughs> they wanted to train the soldiers just in case they were using the. They didn't know. They thought these bombs were going to be used all the time. Just drop them at any little fucking argument you have. <laughs> and, they, and, and, and they thought it was like going to be that they, they would have to then use a tactical yes. battlefield nuke and then run into the blast to finish everyone off. You run in there with fucking dustbusters and clean the mess up. <laughs> yes. yes. Or makeup. <laughs> <laughs> run in there with a broom. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Send in the first line of Negroes. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that it's bad, but... <laughs> they also have all the uh, they have the uh, radiation uh, patches that they were wearing to see if they had uh, received a lethal dose of radiation. <laughs> yeah. So after one of these blast tests, they are they're interviewing one of these guys, and his patch had went off, indicating that he had received a lethal a lethal, lethal dose. dose of radiation. He's just like he's like, and he's all smiling. He's like, well, yeah, it went off, but yeah, I'm still standing, <laughs> not knowing it's going to take a little while. He for sneezes, your... and all his hair falls hair out of his shoes. <sighs> yes, duck. And, and cover. cover, duck, and cover. Let's go to Matt in uh, Collegeville. Matt. Hey, guys, how's it going? Hey, you know, hey man. Uh, <laughs> there was a kit that they used to sell to kids. It was like Dr. Atomic something or other. and It was like an experiment kit that actually included real radium. Yeah, radium was a giant problem <laughs> back in uh, the day. Uh, a lot of women worked at uh, watch factories, by the way. And um, they, it, when you get a glow-in-the-dark dial... 
on a watch back then, it was radium. And they would p hand paint it on with these tiny little brushes, mm -hmm. like you do with paint by sure. number brushes. And they'd have a little thing of radium next to them. And they would dip it in and paint it. And 12 a hours a day. Not only that, but a lot of times, uh, if you notice when a paintbrush, if you use it too much, it spreads out. Yeah, so you got to take your fingers. And they didn't do it with their fingers. They would lick it. They would, oh, they would lick it with their tongue shit. and twi give it a twist yeah, so it was pointy yeah, again. Sure. And then they dip in the radium. They're just licking radium all day. And then meanwhile, like the waste was just being dumped in barrels out back into ditches. And, and st so it's just... Everything was radioactive back then. You think that caused a problem? Oh, huge. <laughs> you think that might have caused oh, a problem? Oh, my God. Uh, let's go to Jeremy in Cleveland. Jeremy. Jeremy in Cleveland. Hey, boys. Oh. Uh, he's playing the Opie song in the background. I hate you, Jeremy. <laughs> what was the song? Oh, the okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, hey, boys. Anyways, about <laughs> years ago, they closed this old clinic down by my house. Well, me and my friends got the bright idea to break into it because we were stupid. There was an old x-ray machine in there. We spent about two hours just taking unprotected x-rays of ourselves. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, wonderful. Are you sterile? Are your balls like raisins? <laughs> I have no idea. I haven't had any kid scares. So oh, there I'm you go. Sterile. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Later, boys. All right. Later. Jesus Christ. Yeah, the shock wave. They're right. They say that the atomic particles will just bounce off your skin. They can only enter through an open wound. But don't worry. And then people are worried about, yeah, see? Through an open wound. How about your mouth or nose? <laughs> still isn't lethal. Uh, it's okay. And then they talk about how, look, I just got a mouthful of radioactive dirt. <laughs> These idiots. Yeah, this, this oh, that was the guy that got the lethal yeah. dose? No, I think, I think it's oh. How about all that smoke and, and dust and radiation, would you? Couldn't see. Couldn't see for quite a spell. Uh, just uh, hey. Jesus. They're all looking into it. Yeah. They, yeah. Just, they just took an, an atomic bomb to the face. <laughs> to the face. You think they got dusty oh. eyes? Oh, okay. No, just regular GI white clothes. GI white clothes. That's tough to manipulate. on your lapels here. This white badge. Can you tell me what that is? Uh, that's a film badge to determine, uh, to take the amount of radiation you've received in the area. And they can tell from that if you received a lethal dose. That's that right? right. That's right, they can. <laughs> lethal no dose. masks? Nothing. They're standing in foxholes. Uh, they got a blast in the face of radioactive dirt and dust and debris. And now they're jumping out of their foxholes and marching towards the giant mushroom cloud oh that the God. atomic bomb has left. Just marching towards an atom bomb explosion. <laughs> oh, the 50s. What an innocent time. I wish like, we could go back. You would think that was special effects. That, that looks like CGI, right? Because no one would do that. Now they're just running toward it. They're running toward it. They're, that's what they were told like to do. Like it's a candy cloud. <laughs> a can <laughs> that's a cloud of candy. Salt Lake City on US Highway 91. Yes. You'd pass through St. George, Utah. Oops. The wind seems to have changed direction. miles to the west. Oh, just kids walking. I love this. They inform these people to just stay in their homes and you'll be safe. From the radioactive cloud. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this program to bring you important news. Opie and Word has just been received from the Atomic Energy Commission <laughs> that due to a change in wind direction, Oops. the residue from this morning's atomic detonation is drifting in the direction of St. George. Oh, that's good. It is suggested that everyone remain indoors for one hour or until further notice. An hour. There is no danger. Of course. This is simply routine atomic energy commission. Don't safety worry about procedure. it. It's okay. It's just an atom Parents bomb. Need not be alarmed just about fall out. At school. <laughs> no. no recesses outdoors will be permitted. So and as the people at St. George took cover, it was natural that some of them had questions about atomic <laughs> tests. What is the atomic bomb? Why do we have to test bombs? How little an amount of radiation will cause how many mutations? <laughs> mutations. Never before have so many known so little about a subject so big. And this is so Beaver's important. father, Ward Cleaver. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, there he is. The capabilities of most weapons are pretty well understood. But when it comes to atomic explosions, <laughs> goes, the guessing game Let's get starts. to know the atomic bomb. All right, let's take a few minutes right now and get acquainted with an A-bomb. Get acquainted with an A-bomb. A -bomb. With an A-bomb. Meet test able. <laughs> Meet test able. How about no? 
submarine bomb exploded in a harbor might affect a city. The affected area would be a poor picnic site. <laughs> but might be entered briefly or passed through quickly with a varying degree of risk. Risk. Is something the military does have over their nose is supposed a hanky to hanky over the nose supposed to protect them? Accepted in a matter of fact manner in civilian life. <laughs> Risk is part of the pattern of daily routine. Like burning a roast, the, the showing a woman, <laughs> or getting scalded a little in the shower, or slipping. It's the same thing as oh, an A bomb funny. going off. Some of the falsehood circulated oh, this about is great. radiation effects are trivial but upsetting. They're beamed right at one's self-esteem. You see. And will eventually result in a race of bald-headed people. Just imagine. <laughs> they show the guy's hair coming out as he's combing it. Yeah. Now they show him bald. You old skinhead, old chrome dome. And that's not all radioactivity will do. It will. It will what? Exposure to radiation will cause loss of hair. The treatment, if you'd insist, would be symptomatic, a toupee. But the condition would only be temporary. Your hair would come back. Same color, same cowling. Which puts the finger squarely upon one of the major fallacies in the public... If your hair's falling out due to an atomic blast, they're telling it ain't you growing you back. They're telling you it's going to grow back in. ...worrying capacity to an agent that constitutes only about 15% of an atomic bomb's destroying potential. Ah, okay. And that's unsound. Doesn't fit. No. 85% worry and only 15% death. Who loudly maintain that there is no actual threat to the free world at all. Who's that? Certainly none that can justify oh, no, but he certainly looks official. Nuclear armament. Yes. The opposite viewpoint holds that the development of our nuclear power has been an absolutely necessary protection against communist hostility. I bet he's a Republican. A oh boy. In this view, he's that fucking propaganda minister <laughs> piece of <laughs> shit. <laughs> Unidentified soldiers. It's hairdo. It's just fantastic. Oh, we, got a, we, we got a unknown soldier. We got a grandfather. Well, guys, oh, okay. uh, grandfather was uh, one of the guys that walked one toward the, the mushroom oh, cloud. Boy. Uh Rob in Delaware. What's up, Rob? Yeah, not too much. Happy birthday, Jimmy. Thank um, you. Yeah, back in the fifties, my grandfather was in the uh, National Guard. Oh my god, I'm getting fall out from Jimmy's asshole. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, sir. Yeah. Go ahead. So they sent him to uh, New Mexico for a for an exercise, and part of that exercise was uh, walking into an H-bomb cloud right after it went off. That's and between great. that and uh, starting smoking at probably about 13 or so, um, that's probably why I got lung cancer and had to have a lung removed at 40. What's the difference between H-bomb and A-bomb? At 40? Yeah, about there, yeah. It was in the early to mid, uh, within a few years of that, actually. Wow. Is, it, is he still alive, I guess? <clears throat> no, he made it Any of these guys still alive? No, I would Okay. Uh, some of them probably are. I've seen like interviews. Well, that's before the fifties, isn't it? Ant? That was uh, 40s? no, that was fifties. Fifties? No, yeah. Was, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. No, it wasn't uh, Al Gordo. This was sometime uh, late fifties, early sixties. What's the difference between an H bomb and an A bomb? Oh, an um, A bomb. An H bomb actually uses an A bomb as a detonator. Yeah. It's insanity. So H bombs are worse. Yeah. H is way worse, right? <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, H bomb uh, uses um, a, <laughs> a bomb from A Rod. Yeah, an H bomb uses um, a hydrogen atom. Yeah. What is uh, what was the ones in uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima? Those are atomic bombs. A bombs? Yeah. H bombs are worse. Oh what, yeah, worse. we never dropped worse. an H bomb. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, we've exploded them above ground. So have the Russians on our own, like you know, soil testing them and on uh, certain islands and stuff. But um. It, uh, it, 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 we haven't used them against anybody, no. The only ones that we used were Hiroshima and Nagasaki in war. An H-bomb? Yeah, that's H-bomb. How many H A-bombs uh, equal an H-bomb? Oh, my God. It all depends. Like, it, you get into massive kilotons now. Like, a 10 megaton H-bomb is how many times more than Nagasaki bomb? Once. Some, oh, it's a ridiculous amount. It's a ridiculous amount. I don't know offhand. All right, let's say hi to Russ. But believe me, it is crazy fucking more powerful. Yeah. Russ, what do you got, buddy? Yeah. Yeah, a buddy of mine lives out in Nevada, and he dated a girl for a while that grew up in St. George. She ended up with thyroid cancer, bone cancer, and she said half the town had some kind of cancer, leukemia, whatever, just from all that shit. Anybody that was over, say, 50 years old, Pretty much only made it to about 60 years old. 
You think uh, Wait, there, there were a lot of problems in that town? Obviously, years oh, later. They are. They're, they're saying a lot of the uh, a lot of the Hollywood people too. Even John Wayne uh, succumbed to cancer because of uh, a lot of the westerns that they filmed in that area that all the nuclear testing was done in. Right. Uh, it wasn't the you know twenty thousand cigarettes they all smoked today, right. but <laughs> it was still a radioactive area. Yeah, 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 of course. As they're f- filming their westerns. Yes. Uh, all right. Well, I guess we did that. Uh, actually, this guy that 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 paint you were talking about, Dave in Connecticut, Dave. Good morning, boys. Good morning, Dave. Uh, hey, Dave. My dad used to use the, um, was it, the radioactive paint, you know, the glow-in-the-dark paint back in the day. Yeah. And so to make it really fine, you know, you put the paintbrush in your mouth, twirl it around, get a fine point, dip it in the paint, make a nice little dot or something like that, put the paintbrush back in your mouth. So he was eating this stuff pretty much on a constant basis for I years. I eat it. Yeah. <laughs> One of their eat tricks that they shit. used to like, they used to have the little meters like you were talking about. They used to think it was fun to make them trip. And scare the lady outside the door who had to look at him every single day. It was a happy little game. Jeez. Uh, anything happened to your dad, health-wise? No, so far. He's still uh, still going. But, uh, you think it's a ticking time bomb inside this guy's <clears throat> father, though? Yeah. <laughs> Just so yeah. Sorry to say that, man. It's your dad, but it doesn't no, sound it's... like that's going to work out in the mm-hmm. end for him. Oh, no, no, if it no, hasn't got him yet. Man. No, they used to think it was hilarious, you know. It's like, oh, look, we scared Mabel with the little uh, glow the atomic the, meter again. Glow uh-huh. in the dark, glow in the dark tongue and stuff. Right. The yeah, uh, yeah. the H bomb is Thank about you, about ten times more powerful than the atomic bomb. And they have stuff that's even stronger than that, yeah, don't they? Yeah, yeah, that's like your your mid range H bomb. But picture ten atomic bombs going off at the same time, like the ones that were dropped on Hiroshima. Uh, going off at the exact same time. Would that time. be a problem, man? Oh, man. Would that, <laughs> would that be, be a big? problem? Ouch. <laughs> hey, you think, um, I mean, we're laughing at all this stuff that, like, the people before us did. Oh, yeah. With the fucking foot x ray. Oh, uh, what and, are we doing now? Are we going to be like, what the fuck were we thinking with the cell phones? I think. Uh, I mean, the cell phones are the obvious one, right? Cell phones would probably be is, one. Is and some dopey jock going to look back and, like, look at old footage of us using cell phones? Yeah. And go, what were they thinking? And just staring into uh, monitors and. You know our, all of our uh, little electronic equipment and computer screens for right. so long, and um, I think medication, a lot of the over medicating and uh, prescription drugs that everybody's doing now, um, I think that'll come back and bite us in the ass. Microwave ovens. Mm. <laughs> They'll actually show footage us in the like being seen using cell phones will be like us watching somebody from the fifties holding a hot iron to their face <laughs> yeah, exactly. and singing into it. <laughs> exactly. Iron. Exactly. Look at the size of that friggin' plasma bubble. They can. It's radio. I'm saying, Jim. Oh wow. Yeah, oh, if you oh, want to look oh, one up, oh, just oh. look up hydrogen bomb explode. It vaporizes the clouds. All around. Are those it. clouds vaporizing? Yeah, it's, it's those are just clouds vaporizing. I thought it would be a good idea that humans need this. <laughs> Come on, a lot of a lot of lot of power other? right there. What the fuck is that? That's about? a lot of juice. I like. I love how we really figured out well how to get it and to use it to kill people really efficiently, but then um, like we we have a hard time making power with it. <laughs> Can't figure out you know something that we would can be make very power. useful. We right? have nuclear power plants, but nothing as effective as that. You is know? that a lot of power? Oh god, there's got to be so much <laughs> juice in there, so much juice. It's All like right. a little sun. Why don't we take a break? We uh, we got other things to do. People say this is uh, the nuclear stuff is bad. It could make another Bruce Bixby. Ah, <laughs> Bruce Bixby. Good old Bruce Bixby. <laughs> I made a mistake. <laughs> People remember. I meant Bill Bixby. Bruce Bixby. Bruce Bixby. Bruce Bixby. <laughs> Bruce Bixby. I like uh, Bruce Bixby. Great. Why don't we take a break? We'll continue. All right. Well, that sucked. To hear the Opie and Anthony show five days a week, live on satellite radio, online on your phone or tablet, or even on demand, go to SiriusXM.com. Also, interact with the Opie and Anthony show on Twitter, at Opie Radio, at Anthony Cumia, and at Jim Norton.